today's matchup. MVP. SK Telecom T1. Beginning of the end. 2018 League of Legends Champions Korea Spring Split. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Apologies for the long break, but you can blame, you know, Casey Rolster on that one. They won too quickly over at Jin Air Green Wings. I'm Achilles back here with Papa Smithy as we get ready to go into our final match of the evening. SK Telecom T1 versus MVP, a ninth versus 10th place matchup. Never did I think we'd be in this timeline where I could make that statement and it'd be true. Again, it's it's a strong statement, but it's a true one, right? Factually, right now, SKT sit in ninth and strength of schedule did count against them. It's a very tough league, but... They've had some tough opposition. Is that enough to excuse ninth place? No. This team is still finding its footing. They try to play that standard SKT style, but they don't seem to have the cavalry there to surround Faker, and Faker has made a couple of errors himself. Now, where does the blame lie? Is it on Coma for the draft? Is it on the uh, coaching staff for coming into the season without the experienced Marin or other players that they were linked with but never signed. None of that is clear, and I guess between the two of us and also this series where they come in heavy favorites against MVP, we'll try to understand and uncover where SKT is at, where they need to be, because a strong SKT is what the LCK has always traded upon. SKT's strength is the story of the LCK from 2013 onwards. 2014 wasn't a great year, but it wasn't this. Wasn't them in ninth place, one and three. Win here, they won 2-0. Yeah. They could join BBQ at joint seventh, but that joint seventh is not what they're shooting for, that's for sure. Yeah, I mean, even that statement is another one that's uh, pretty unbelievable. Joint seventh place with BBQ for SK Telecom, who went to uh, aspire for so much so much, uh, you know, greater performances here, have been struggling heavily. But they need to turn things around a win against MVP that isn't an utter stomp is still going to be a cause for concern here for SK Telecom. They want to come out swinging. They want that 2-0, and they want to make it convincing. Well, their opposition we'll start with on the blue side is MVP for game one. No sign of pilot for the last couple of best of threes. Already seen them this week. Could just be 0-12, and 12, one and done, and done for week three if they're to lose in this particular series. Maha retains a starting spot. Still no game wins. Still not Really being too close to one, apart from a single game, you would say, against the opposition last time out, where they did actually have a good early game, but unfortunately, let it all go as it went on. So MVP still searching for that big victory. Yeah, I swear, I'm looking at ADD, and his neck does not look nearly as large in the booth as it is in that photo. So I think somebody just photographed his face onto a uh, baby giraffe, perhaps. And that's how we wound up with that. But uh, this is another guy who we're going to be looking to have a nice performance out of the top lane. We've seen him, seen him go back to the Scion, something that was formerly ultra comfort, and it just hasn't had success. He will be going up against the rookie here of SKT. Tall in the top lane will be starting over the likes of Antara. Where's Wolf with the question the fans ask, and Wolf is on the bench once again, looking at solo queue, still playing jungle, so they will be sticking with effort in the support. Blank has had a poor season so far. A lot of the members that aren't Faker have a lot to talk about, and people have their words for Faker. I'll talk more about that in-game. I feel there's some stats that show he's still doing his best in the mid lane, but SK Telecom, what is their ultra comfort these days? That's a question we don't know the answer to. The comps that worked for them in the past, with the meta evolving and their playing lineup involving a lot more rookie status, are they still relevant to SK Telecom? SK Telecom T1, so many questions. We haven't seen them in six days. We're waiting for the answers because we want to know more about SKT. This best of three will give us some information, but certainly won't answer questions. They'll hope it doesn't raise more, though, Achilles. Yeah. That's what they're really scared about. You see, it's been struggle street for both of these squads, more so for MVP as they find themselves with a negative 10 score line. SKT and nines with a negative three. So you can see just how far in the hole MVP is at the moment. Not a single game win. So far, been nothing but O2s for them. And SKT, just the one victory over Rox, and that was a hard-fought one. MVP against KSV had a single game there where they actually could have won, but threw at Baron. You're seeing some nice KDAs, and honestly, there are some good laning stats for some of these players. 
Some of them not so good. Antara is certainly struggling in that regard. But the KDA has meant little. The shot calling in the late game has been questionable. The drafts have been criticized as well. Kind of a cavalcade of negative negativity for a team that has been so glorious, so up the top for so very long. Ever since the LCK started in the league format, SK Telecom has made every final bar one and won every final they entered barring the most recent one. So they were world championship runners up. Look at the history <laughs> against MVP. MVP debuted in the LCK in summer of 2016. They have never won a single game against SK Telecom. It's just, I'm sorry, no, I don't mean to laugh, but it's, it's very convincing. Uh, that SKT would come into this one and get it 2-0, but these days you honestly have to question it. And that's why I had that, that chuckle right there is because despite this history, this is the weakest that we've ever seen SKT. And if MVP is finally going to take a game away from them, this could very well be that match. And kind of the lose-lose is, it's kind of facetious to say that we think MVP can win this series. Can they win a game? It's possible. Where are SKT really at? We don't know. But it's that kind of lose-lose where if SKT win 2-0, there'll be people say, I knew it all along. If they don't, yeah. there'll be people dogpiling. There's no real great result because MVP are 0-12. and 12. If they lose this series and 0-10 and 10 as they come in, looking at this support matchup here I mean, between Effort and Max, a lot of criticism towards Effort. He's been caught out a lot of times. Kill participation, that doesn't really matter as a stat when it comes to how good a player is. The team style comes in to kill participation the assist per game is very high but it's because the bot lane has been it's been 5v5s only that have really meant anything for SKT so high kill participation is actually the opposite of Kilios in the past we had Hooney at 60% kill participation we had very low kill participation numbers from SKT because of their strength in lanes now it's really only team fights where they find their numbers yep. Well, DPM for supports, Max has got that going for him. So, uh, but it's really hard to take, you know, to really judge the champion pool when you look at it, and every single one of them has a loss. So, who knows what he's going to pull out for us today? I mean, he has always been the mad scientist of the support role here in the LCK since they joined in 2016. The problem with being a mad scientist when you never win—that's way more than I would have thought. I mean, SK Telecom, it's a popularity vote. Look at how many votes SKT have here. We have three to 4,000 for most teams. 10,000 votes for a team is the most we've had. So the SKT fans, they're proud. The Faker fans, they're proud. SKT has the largest following in Korea and of Korean teams by global fans by a country mile. I was, I was saying it's more than I expected for MVP to have. I was sure. expecting SKT to win by a much more of a landslide than that. But the MVP fans proving that they are just as loyal as those there from SKT, even if they're not more so loyal than SKT fans. I'm always honestly. struck whenever I go to Sangam or Gangnam Stadium and sit there. The MVP fans are loud. They are always present. Their team has got no victories, but they're screaming their names. Whereas SK Telecom, the fans are proud also. Coma in the booth. They're looking dapper, but they need to be looking with killer instinct. Faker, expressionless in those losses against KSV and their losses against Kingzone, sorry, I should say. See how things go here. MVP versus SKT. This should be a very interesting series, regardless of the result. All right. Well, MVP over on the blue side. Rise is going to be the first thing taken off the board. We've seen so many teams targeting out that rise away from Faker. So no real surprise there. But the Bard will be taken away by SKT. See if it means something. Max, the only person who's played it this season. It's very good against immobile carries. So in a Twitch Cogmore meta, you can understand Bard bans because the value of the ultimate. I wonder if this is targeting something like a Cogmore side of SKT. It's very weird. This kind of says to me, hey, Bang might want to go hyper carry is what I read into a Bard ban, but it also reduces some of the lane dominance, and that's confirmed by the Callista ban as well. Against the side of SKT when it comes to must bans, Ontara is in the lineup. The Gnar is definitely very high priority. Tal is in the lineup because of his stronger laning phase compared to Untara. Tal himself only has one competitive win, and that's on the Vladimir. The Vladimir will be banned. Tal has one pocket pick I'll talk about. If we do see Gangplank locked in by MVP, that excites me, but otherwise it's going to be playing largely lane dominant style. Sejuani is available. Zoe is available. They leave Sejuani open just to ban away Ultra Comfort from ADD. Let's take that one off the boards, trying to offset him. And the rest of MVP, first pick available. Let's see where they go. The Ezreal is still on the board. 
There's Sejuani. There's so many other things. That Sejuani you have to and see. Zoe, right? A very, very high of. priority because Ian hasn't found value on the Zoe. Could we finally see Faker? We Zoe? very well could see it in this game, but Ian is not going to priority pick it. The Galio being open as well may deny us a way from the Zoe that I know people would love to see playing so much Don't of it in solo it. queue. Don't you do it, Faker. It'd be the second time they've jumped onto Galio. The first time was a loss, most likely to be mid lane Galio here from SKT. That game two against Kingzone, where Galio just couldn't make it happen. Bouncy Castle strategy has been employed by multiple teams. If we do see Zach locked in first rotation, it is suggested here. This was a power pick for SKT at the World Championships, five games in a row in the bracket stage. But I think that was more of a necessity. That's when they had a different lineup where they had a true carry top laner and Faker had trust in his side lanes if he could just be there and rotate first. The side lanes aren't as strong anymore. So does the Galio still make sense is well, the question we'll have to ask. That you wanted to see. Now in solo queue, Tal has been playing a lot of Coin Nasus into oh. the Gangplank just to try to outscale in the face of the GP. It's a risky choice for, so for competitive play, but you would have said the same thing about Riven yesterday from the side of Kingzone. So we'll see if we do see something that he's been practicing specifically against Gangplank in the Nasus. I would say the same thing about the Nocturne that we just saw flashed there. Been quite some time since we've seen the Nocturne coming through. It's a safer draft for Nasus as well because they do have the Galio to try to stop any sort of aggressive moves against him. Wonder if we will see SKT roll the dice, show us something that's been practiced in solo queue. Not for now, as uh, how do you feel about wave clear, Achilles? I feel great. Let's go for 95 minutes. Woo! Kill me. Galio Sivir is certainly the extending game duo. Bang will most likely be going for the unsealed spell book on the Sivir, trying to pressure Ezreal, but a couple of minion dematerializes might end up answering some of the aggression has been showing. Pushing lane. Usually, when you have Sivir versus Ezreal, Galio does at least equal to in terms of pushing in the mid lane as well. When it comes to mid laners against Galio, scaling option like the Azir was the one that was taken uh, last time out by BDD, was able to overpower Faker in that lane. So smart ban there when it comes to the first ban. Malzahar is usually banned as well. So we'll see if we see two bans. No, just the Talia, just in case Ian wants to match wave clear. And Talia was one of Ian's fallback champions in previous seasons. Could see the Malzahar, could see the Corky coming out from Ian there in the mid lane. Would be a lot of AD uh, for MVP though as a squad. So likely gonna be looking for the Mal's. We do see a support pick here. Maybe it does lend more credence to a crazier top lane pick. There's last pick Riven on the red side. I wonder if we will let the dogs out in this particular draft. I'm thinking about it, Kilios. Alistair Sivra, so a bit of proactivity for Effort, who's largely been on Tom Kent's duty in his time on the roster. So I'm seeing if he can look for the engages. He's been caught in a lot of games. You know, that's kind of been his one problem, is getting caught yep. in transition. Alistair's about the catching, so we'll see if he can actually hit the aggressive tent and make that a bit more natural for him. It was his Blitzcrank that people were hyped about when he was playing in Casper Cup. So cool to see some playmaking from Effort. Well, there's the Corky. And support here from Max, gonna be pretty standard, nothing wacky, just gonna see that Tom Kench there. Very much like we saw from KT in that second game, gonna be keeping the Ezreal safe. He's gonna do it. It's locked in, baby. We got Woo! the dogs out. All right, Nasus has been locked in. I'm really SKT. good at these gangplank predictions right here. <laughs> we get the dogs out, Nasus comes back. The last time an LCK team played Nasus, it was the perfect game coming through from the side of Longju Gaming, the Dancing Rift Herald in that game at Worlds, Achilles. I casted oh, that yeah. one, my PogChamp face, when I saw a Dancing Rift Herald in competitive play was awesome. Tal's been practicing it, and people right now, if it's working in theory, if it's working in solo queue, more and more players are playing in competitive. He has the Galio also. Even if he has a low impact jungler, the Galio can also relieve pressure. We got a farm fest going on the top side, and that favors Nasus. More times than not. You know, normally farm fest, not something that we want to look at, but with a Nasus in the mix, I certainly want us locked onto that top lane. Unless there's action happening elsewhere. See how this one's gonna play out tall. It's been a rough start for this guy as a rookie on SKT. Now is going up against ADD. One of the guys who is our, you know, our second mad scientist who has tried playing random things in the top lane and made them work. You think back to the Rengar top that we had. He's now playing up against Anasis. 
And uh, he doesn't want the embarrassment of losing this matchup. Very low range from SKT means team fights into objectives rather than just objectives. 500 range on Sivro, four melee champions, a risky draft, but an exciting one from SKT. They're showing some of their old flair. All right, well, here we go. Do or die time for SKT and MVP. It's a battle for who will not be in that 10th place spot. Let's see if MVP can pick up a game one win versus SK Telecom as we jump onto the Rift. As you might expect, SKT fans screaming their hearts out, but MVP giving it a good go as well. Waiting on the keystones for the Nasus. In solo Q, Klepto is the most common one. Q stacks, a bit of Q lane presence, auto, and the fact that it's an empowered auto gets you that Klepto, so... Well, it's not ranged like the Gangplank, it follows a similar train of thought. Let's see whose fans are going to be happier here. Both of them right down the bottom. You'll notice an interesting summon and spell choice by Faker. Had to deal with a lot of aggression on the Galio previously. First yeah. time we've ever seen a heal Galio in competitive play, I would go so far as to say. Usually it is the Teleport. Imagine that's going to be Unsealed Spellbook on the Galio. We saw Electrocute become more and more common recently, but when you see heal, you do expect it to be the unsealed spell. Well, so far, just going for a little bit of harassment here. Pulverize comes through. They get the pop up there on the max. As they continue trying to take the blue buff away, smite will be used. Yeah, they forced the smite. That means that Sejuani, who already has vision of the enemy red, got a hard leash and smite to go there. So it should be vertical jungling at minimum, potentially a three buff. See if Blank reads this situation. Yeah, spell book there for Faker and Bang side of SKT. And Phase Rush on Tatal. That's interesting. Don't see as much Phase Rush hmm. in competitive play. It's an Aurelian Soul favorite. In solo queue, you see it on Ghost Flash Darius all the time, but when it comes to competitive play, we've seen it very sparingly. Ah, uh, yes. You've told me the stories about the Ghost Flash Darius. I'm telling you, around Gold to Platinum Elo, it's just Ghost Flash Darius in every game. Well, fortunately... There's no Elo Heaven, I'm let not, me tell you. I'm not there yet, so I haven't been able to, to spot it myself. I mean, uh, Kleptomancy going to be yeah. here for ADD. It was a Corrupting Potion style. We'll see if Coin has ever purchased here. It's been a big favorite on Nasus. Theory behind the coin is that basically every minion you don't get could lead to gold that you can pick up in terms of the quest there. And also, the eventual completion of the Talisman of Ascension is obviously a great pickup for the Nasus as you go on. So an 8.1 pick would be the Nasus if it's going to be the, the coin, but... Probably going to be practicing on 8.2 for the better part of a week, so perhaps it's going to be a more conventional build. Well, slow and steady so far. Faker has already swapped. Get himself back into that lane, so TP on him here for the moment. It's just ultra defensive choice from Faker to start the lane and then the teleport in. Similar to mid laners taking a knife and switching over early. I want to talk about some numbers here, because SK Telecom, you know, a lot of people wondering where they're at, what to make of this very poor start, because they've had, you know, swaths of seasons where they've really struggled. Interesting number, we already saw the match history, but an interesting number to talk about is their goal difference at 15. SK Telecom is actually currently the worst early game team in terms of GD at 15 in the league. They are at negative 834 gold in the first 15 minutes. And that's worse than MVP, who are negative 600 and have been snowballed on many, many times. They have heavily struggled in the early game. A lot of that to do, you would say, the jungler is usually the big unknown factor in the early game. Also, in terms of the percentage of CS they pick up, they're number 10. So they actually only pick up 49.1% of the CS in a game. That means that in these big CS games, like, for example, the famous game against Jin Air, there's not picking up as many creeps and leaving gold on the table in many ways, and who to throw the blame at is kind of different depending on which SKT uh, supporter you talk to. Certainly Koma has had some criticism about the drafts being too much scaling. Then a lot of criticism towards Untara, who's not playing here. Untara's laning stats, by the way, are abysmal. He actually has the yeah. worst laning stats of basically anyone in the league that's a regular. That's why Tal and his more aggressive side 
and maybe his champion pool also is being preferred. Faker, on the other hand, who has also had his criticism and certainly has had some late game team fights he'd like a do over on. Number one in kills, number one in deaths, number one in sis in his role. Yeah. That lets you know that the action is all going through Faker. He's clearly trying his absolute best, and, and the game plan is definitely rotating through him. When it comes to basically any laning stats, he's top three to top four in the league. So he's certainly in a vacuum, has been doing absolutely everything he can. Doesn't always come together in the late game, and there's been basically something really counting against them every game, whether it's the draft or an individual member or some macro decisions in the late game. And in the end, in a very strong league, that is counted significantly against SK Telecom T1. I mean, people joke about, you know, the 1v9 for Faker, but the numbers are, you know, they kind of almost point that way. But like you said, he is not uh, without blame this season, getting killed by a redemption, getting killed while shopping, while uh, recalling and everything. So. Uh, he's got a lot in his mind. It's clearly what we're learning yeah. from things like that. I mean, Stony-faced expressions when he was, uh, his team was getting styled on by Kingzone were... Kind of ominous, given his uh, usual neutral demeanor. This game's early game been very, very passive, as you might imagine, waiting for all the level sixes to be popped. And Nasus vs. Gangplank is about the least interactive lane you could ever imagine. I mean, the mid lane's not going to yield much else either because of the cull there that uh, was picked up by Ian. So still just going to be stacking that one up. He's got about half of it completed so far. The game plan of SKT is kind of been pretty stable over the years. It's all been about mid-game. The early game has always been SKT's struggle, not to the tune of being 10th in the league, but they were never strongest early. It was always whatever you throw at us, eventually in the mid to late game, we'll strangle you out of the game and from there take on a victory from smart macro decisions. The game's in a bit of a weird state right now with Baron buff very frequently not being able to end games. And, and SKT have you know kind of been... A bit toothless in the late game. A bit toothless as we look at the last time Nasus was selected in the top lane. In the LCK. 2013 summer in the LCK. It was Impact, Impact. Who was in the league for another year after that and then went to North America for multiple years. Three years already in North America. Which lets you know that was a while ago. Yeah. Ready to uh, become an NA resident next season. He's done his time. But, yeah, I mean... Impact versus Insect, that, uh, that is just ancient territory right there, as far as the game is concerned. But just going to see this blue buff taken away here by Faker. Some fancy moves with the Justice Punch. But, uh, so how are you doing? I'm doing pretty well. Kind of waiting for this game to come online. Yeah, it's going to be a while. Zack and Sejuani. Sejuani hasn't been able to invade. It's Aftershock as well. Not the fleet footwork for a bit more aggression. The top lane is non-interactive. That's actually more nasty than you'd expect. That's the top, especially. A better uh, win record than I was going to expect as, as well. We had a jungle nasty matter for a while. Where yeah. In Insect was playing it quite a bit. But uh, a yeah, top lane, long time ago. Nasus in 2013. A thing for a while. But apart from that, not being common. I haven't seen any abuse cases of the Unsealed Spellbook this game either, so Farm 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 is the way to go. You know, I wonder what the longest standing unpicked uh, champion would be at this point. Garen. In the of game. Garen, yeah. That's a, that's a pretty good bet. Because, I mean, once upon a time, you might have said Teemo. We had two of those by accident. <laughs> <laughs> it's the uh, accidental lock ins on that, I'm sure. Plenty of people in the chat will remember that. I don't know if there's the ever been. With someday. There may never have been a Garen game in the LCK. I'd be interested in finding that out. If anyone has that was picked in the LPL by Amazing J, I think a couple of times, definitely at least once uh, in 2015 spring. But yeah, Garen was one that uh, we just don't see. Too binary of a champion. We've seen a Moo Moo from beyond, you know, uh, twice last year, I believe. Yeah. And uh, then 2016. Oh, yes, 2016, sorry. So we've seen that from him. Uh, I, yeah, I can't really think of what it's else. It's been a long time since we've seen Shaco as well. Shaco, uh, Wukong. Yeah. It was a Wukong jungle phase for a little bit there, and then situation is a mid lane counter pick. But you're right, another long, long standing unpicked champion. But we got the dog this time, yep. which, when it comes to the pop champ moments, uh, unfortunately doesn't get those early. Yeah, not quite. When he starts, uh, you know, two shotting everybody, that's when you can get excited. But that could be a, way, a ways away. Yeah, and was picked into Maokai against Soaz in the 
Longju vs. Fnatic game, and that was very successful. Dog champion. It, that was not lost on anyone, trust oh, me. Oh, I know. It was a very amusing game. Just reminding. Never forget. Going Emax here to try to control the lane, but it is a free lane for Gangplank. And I guess the theory from Tal is free lane for Nasus and a free lane for Gangplank. In the late game, the Wither especially, and just the amount of zone control you have as Nasus in the late game is massive. So that's the theory behind going for the Nasus here. Maze Rush does allow him to ignore slows from the Tom Kench Q and the Icebone Gauntlet that's already completed for the Ezreal. Yeah, rushed that one down. Saw the Cloth Armor coming through, so figured it would be the Glacial Shroud up front. But MVP now, 10 and a half minutes. They're going to start up this Infernal. Gonna draw Zach down. Zach and Galio on the way. They are converging. He'll be in range of the Elastic Slingshot if Blank wants to go in for it. And I don't think you want to give this one away for free. He's going to enter into the pit. Going to be looking for this one as it drops down low. Spike 4 going to be won by Beyond there as he takes it away. But he's going to pay for that one with his life as First Blood comes through for SKT. Bot lane now chasing in onto Maha. Try to answer that one, but they forced the flash out of effort. As he had that ignite ticking, had to get out of there, but six slingshot yet again. Blank gets the grab in, pulls Max back, but he's just too healthy. So not gonna be able to find the kill. So Infernal over to MVP, but first blood to SK Telecom. And the evacuation there wasn't as good as it could be. Ian had to blow his flash after kind of misreading the situation using the blast cone. Now it's all about the war of who has to recall first, and Maha has a lot of mana, so usually Ezra are gonna have the last word in scenarios like this. Trying to punish effort pretty heavily, but getting the kill is going to be a bit wanting there for Maha, so effort will just be able to limp back behind the turret and likely recall here safely. Three true carries on the side of MVP, so high value Infernal. That's why we saw such an extended contest, whereas for SKT, the Infernal of much lower value. Watching oh, Blank. Slingshot coming through, trying to get the lock down here oh, onto Max, who is without his flashlights. Bounce will pull him back into four members, plus the taunt can't pop the shield and Faker. We'll find a second kill here for SKT. Yeah, good room timing. Tried this against King Zone, but couldn't get anything. This time, they pick up the kill. Oh, so we get the confirmation. That was all Nasus game. Okay, so that's why there was the such top. a large sample yeah. size. This makes a lot more sense. Yep. Still 80%. So four and one. Maybe he can make that uh, five and one here now. Also, putting five points into his E early means he does chunk ADD and the minions as he pushes in. Still PVE, so despite the awesome kind of Throwback of actually having a Nasus in our game. Watching the lane is optional. Letting the OGN Observer know. Trinity Force hit by the Corky. Still some nice spikes for MVP to deal with, but for now at least, SKT, the moment they get, they still have the hero's entrance up. They're still in a very comfortable spot. They still, they clearly have trust in their scaling. Very strong 5v5 comp, but really one way. If the initiation doesn't work and they try to run away, Four melee champions and a 500 range carry will be burned down as the items start to pile on. So mid game here for SKT is going to be what I'm looking at the closest. They have so much engage and also counter engage. There's a lot going on that they should be able to set up fights if their vision control can be on point in the mid game. Well, things nice and tight knit there in the top lane. One CS difference between Tal and ADD. To take a look next time we're over hovering over hovering over towel see how many stacks he's at now as blank just ejects himself with the elastic slingshot roam down from the bottom lane here from faker hero's entrance going to be coming through looking for the pop up there on the max finds it barely now looking for the taunt clips him just off the end barrage coming down from the gp to try to dissuade them but should still be the tom kench going down one final punch as faker finds his second kill of the game and no heal on tamaha to potentially keep max alive means tom kench goes down again I had to counter push in mid lane, but only so much can be done at this point in the game. Faker continues to be a menace, continues to bring it One back to that RNG series and try to play this Galio to buff up his side lanes, who's struggled a lot so far in LCK Spring 2018. I can't tell what number that is right now. What are you looking on at? His, on his stacks. He's but getting there. We, like we, we only see the first two, unfortunately. Yeah, it was a bit uh, scrunched up, so. It's like 130 or so. He's only going uh, Q second as a max, so Couldn't doesn't have the same cooldown on it just yet. Yeah. So the stacking, it's hard to see. We'll see if uh, we can get a better look at that. And the stacking, I think, is going to be yeah, 140 ish. Pretty irrelevant for this game. If we go long enough, obviously we will comment on it. But for now, it's largely about just scaling. I mean, the Nasus, 40% CDI Nasus, a Terra, whatever the stack number is. Probably going to be Frozen Heart Trinity Force, I would imagine, but could just be an Iceborne Gauntlet. Not usually a favorite of the Nasus. 
it's had its phases. Yeah. And yeah, Righteous Glory, uh, Trinity Force, also another choice. See, just exactly where they want to go. For now, though, still just going to be wave clear war, uh, wars going on. Just the tankiest, beefiest frontline ever from SKT. Zach, Nasus, Galio, the Alistair. That's four items you kind of need to bust through those. We're talking about oof, multiple, multiple reminders needed, other things needed to really reinforce any sort of hopes of puncturing through an insanely tanky frontline. And Sivir, who fights with her tank line, is basically going to be rushing in and trying to look for auto attack to reset. Infinity Edge on Sivir, I think, is the go time for team fights. They're decent this early, where the base damages will actually puncture into the squishy MVP side, but Infinity Edge allowing for the potential for the crit ricochets. The crit ricochets on basically three members here will do insane damage, and that's high value for the Sivir. Everybody will be nice and bunched up. So, easy to ensure that damage getting spread around. For now, though, MVP. Still going to find themselves in a nice little lead despite all the kills going over to SKT. Maha still loves these Berserker Greaves builds onto the Ezreal with no AD. It's very bizarre. If you're going to rush Mana Moon, you could at least say that you get something out of the Berserker Greaves, but with Icebound Gauntlet, it's very strange. The only person I really trust for bizarre builds is Kramer. Really? You're on the Locket, uh, Locket train on AD Carry as of yesterday? If he makes it work, I can't argue with it. I mean, he could have built any item. And if, Maha, still have won. if Maha wins with the Berserker Greaves, then maybe I'll, I will respect it. So far, that's a pretty safe thing if you don't want to opt into uh, MVP item builds. Still 0% win rates. Not too much of a fine tooth comb needed. When it comes to MVP, is it's a engaged time. Yeah, Blank coming in with the Elastic Slingshot yet again. They lock up Max this time. He does have the Flash. We'll use it as the exhaust comes down. Let's bounce. Not going to clip anybody. And Faker, he gets caught out. Has to go in with a stopwatch. TP coming through. Flashes into the pit. Justice punches away and seems like he will make it out alive. Meanwhile, Tal teleporting in straight into four members. Might just be sent to his death. The Devourer comes through. The Nasus flashes away. But one final hit will do it. Could have held on to both of those summoners or at least canceled the TP. But instead, he allows MVP to put a kill on the board and maybe even find themselves a second Infernal Drake. That was pretty rubbish, Kilios. So it was two bad decisions there. Tal completing his teleport is the most obvious one. But also Faker getting focused down in transition. They were putting everything into trying to turret dive, always to lock up the Tom Kench. If they had the flash timing, it would have understood that it was a low percentage chance. Blank altered, even though the flash had already come through, so the ult was for no reason at all. Again, it's definitely not the polished SKT, but they got a lot of bugs to work out. The intent is fine. They go in, Faker's caught here, and so decides to ult anyway. He's trying to escape largely with the ultimate. He does wait out, so by the time Eventually, we just get to see it. it's interrupted on the ultimate. But let's bounce still. Very weird. Not counting the teleport here. Super bizarre yeah. from Tal. Really yeah. poor. Still new. You know, is known for his laning phase. You know, is known for aggression. If you're going to take the Nasus, you kind of have to be on point with the teleports. And uh, that was not that. Well, here we go again. Second Infernal Drake started up by MVP. And no smite nearby. So this is just going to be... That 16% AD AP going over to MVP. And coming back to Faker, you know, we saw, of course, the warning zone of the Galio coming in that it was canceled by the uh, E coming through from the Sejuani. But also, you know, you just watch that passage of play and say, he was probably watching bot side, you know? His eyes were probably not on his own character, and you already called him out for the shopping trip and the death to redemption. He's thinking about a lot, but sometimes laying down his own small decision making. They're trying to get the lock down there onto Ian. Doesn't find it, but instead will get locked up by the Sichuani. Does not have the flash. He's going to go ahead and use the hero's entrance. Jumps to the side, but isn't in much of a better position. Gets the hit there onto ADD, so will not press forward. He gets taken down, and that's going to be now a Rift Herald. Nicely leashed here for MVP that they can scoop up, and they're looking quite good right now. 4,000 gold up over SKT. Mid lane turret has already taken a significant amount of damage, and with one Rift Herald charge, I think it'll go down, but they don't even need it. No, they don't need it. They got the Demolish proc. SKT didn't have any advanced vision and wanted to just train down a Rift Herald with no aggressive vision. They had no idea where any members of MVP were. They didn't have an objective bot side for them to take instead. Now trying to collapse onto Bang. Yeah, Abyssal Voyage coming through, but he's got his ultimate popped. On the hunt, just going to go ahead and take him out of there. 
Or thrill of. Throw it off the hunt, yes. On the hunt. Ice, ice. No, no, on the hunt is actually Sivir. Oh, okay. I'm Throw of the up. hunt is Rengar. You're, okay, there we go. It was one of the, it was obviously one of the two, so. And w just to confuse you, when we get Rengar Sivir, we have on the thrill of the hunt. Yes, on the thrill of the hunt. Sometimes you run out of hunt words, you know? An SKT. I think when we combine them, we should just call it the chase. Oh, come on. On the throw of the hunt actually makes sense. It's pretty cool. Bjorn's going to plop the Rift Herald topside and stop Nasus from forever farming. So will be turret going down. Nasus after completing the teleport. Lost a lot of minions, and you'll see kind of a trend. We talked about it earlier of SKT missing out on minions across the Rift. They're down in all three lanes in this particular game, not by massive numbers in bot lane, certainly, but significant numbers in mid and top side after all the roaming plays. They've stuck with the bot side after the roams coming through from MVP, so they eventually will crack their first turret. But when it comes to actually being able to control the map, other thing you notice about SKT, they take a turret in the bot side while they know that MVP is in the, in the bot side, while well, they know MVP is top side. They don't go for any vision plays in the enemy red side jungle. They don't try to get information on the spawn of the red. They get nothing but a turret. Usually you get objectives in the form of vision, then back. But in this case, they just feel forced to recall and get nothing when it comes to map vision. SKT need a turnaround, and they need it very soon. Bang with the two items coming through. Needs considerable amount of time for this server to fully come online. The more SKT can stall, the happier they will be, especially with Tal there in the top lane. But MVP with double Infernal, as the items keep rolling in, the three items now is going to be likely enough for them to accelerate the pace of this game, and SKT are going to be struggling to keep up with it. I think Ian focused on 80 heavy builds, kind of a blast of the past, the Trinity Force Infinity Edge yeah. on the core, getting maximum value. From the 16% extra AD, so you know, about 12 AD, 13 AD extra from just the Infinity Edge purchase. If he gets a lucky crit onto the Sivir, and Sivir's taken out, there is damage concerns for the rest of the members of SKT. So, gonna have to watch Bang's positioning in some of these fights. Both summoners up, gives you a bit of optimism there. Infinity Edge for Bang is the real kind of future hope that SKT are focused on. That's a really important item for them to truly have that backline th threat with the Sivir. Went for safe wave clear, which could have been abused otherwise. His effort just takes free damage. Uh -huh. Going pretty aggressive here. Headbutt pulverize in to get the pop up and effort. Might just be going down. Goes insanely low. We'll get healed up here for the moment as the hero's entrance comes through. Grab pulls Max back in, but he's got so much great health shielding that he's not really in threat of going down now. Ian coming in from the side of Speaker gets a taunt in onto Beyond. Goes back with the Justice Punch. Knocks up Maha, and Blank will get popped. He is going to get taken out. The TP maybe misclicked onto the ward instead of onto the Bloblet. And uh, Tull can't join in. He can't keep the Zac alive. And now MVP are looking for the Baron. Yeah, that was a misclick teleport. It was a really bad engage from SKT. No one looked convincing at all. That's two TPs in a row that Tull has uh, botched. Yeah, that's fair to say. But SKT want to contest this Baron. It's already very low. Yeah, they're going to be looking for it. Faker looking for the taunt. Doesn't connect in on it. Anybody's down to 500 HP. And the Spite will very easily pick it up. Faker's going to get dropped. Bang, effort, and Tull now going to be on the way out. Missile Voyage coming through as they try to cut him off, but it will be canceled in the end. But two members dead, still here on SKT. MVP picking up a Baron, nearly 10,000 gold ahead at 23 and a half minutes. Double Infernal Drake, four to three. How many more things do I need to read off to let you know that SKT is in Dire Straits? Yeah, I mean, Dire Straits is the right word, and it's in just the ways you wouldn't imagine. They keep with these two rookies, Tal and Effort. And Tal and Effort and the rest of the team are not on the same page. SKT, you can see they're setting up for the Wombo combo. Blank comes in. Effort took a lot of free damage. So far, you're like, okay, I can kind of understand what you're doing. In the end, nice disengage from MVP. And then from there, Tal is just clearing minions in the bot side. The Bloblets are established. One crit comes through from Ian. Goodbye. He teleports onto the ward instead of waiting and teleporting onto the Bloblets. Just an ultra mistake there from Tal. SKT need a leader. You watch these fights, you see these engages, and they're never clean. It's never SK Telecom. The map control, they have some defensive wards around Baron, but they account for nothing when the Baron is gone. Where is Wolf? You're asking questions like this. Where is any sort of mature leader or someone to really help stop what is ending up being an MVP onslaught, which is not something I thought I'd say today. No. 
This is a uh, whole new territory that we're dealing with at the moment. SKT, ninth place, possibly losing to MVP, even dropping a game to MVP is just shock and all. There's no way for them to finish today 10th spot. If they lose, yes. then MVP game score is obviously abysmal at 0 and 5, yes. 0 and 10 in terms of games. But uh, I don't know if that's a hollow kind of in any way something for the SKT fans to be happy about as Faker has to ult out again. Can't use that to aggress. I mean, SKT really, uh, every time they've tried to aggress, they've been punished for it. They honestly have to just sit back, cut their losses as much as possible, and wait for the scaling to come through. I mean, and Siege here is insane from MVP. As yeah. Ian is so strong. I mean, there's no Infinity Edge here for Bang. Clearing the waves is even a challenge. Even Faker is not that tanky to physical damage, so... But the, he's got his working his way the Seeker's arm guard towards Zonius. It's not there yet. He has some threat. ADD already pushing in the top side. They pop over. It's still three AD threats that do massive damage to turrets. So suddenly, there's no turrets. Sony inhibitor turrets now for SKT. I mean, you're talking about three Sheens, two Trinity Forces, and then the Frozen, yep. uh, the Iceborne Gauntlet, rather. They will just melt these structures. And just for good measure, we have another Infernal Drake on the way. Give MVP the chance of that third. Blank's going to go in looking for ADD. But that's about it. He grabbed him. Bit of a cool story there, Kilios, unfortunately, when it comes to Blank trying to make something happen. MVP ignored that, pushing the bot side. Full court press enacted by MVP. And SKT, do they have the damage to win a fight if MVP don't go and try and turret dive and have aggro onto a carry and just die? MVP making a severe mistake, then sure SKT potentially can run through them, but MVP for now at least being surprisingly controlled. They looked better against KSV. You know, there was a game there they could have won, but you thought that would mean very little coming into this series. SKT had six days to really think about who their strongest roster was, who they wanted to field, what their read on the meta was, and we thought we would see a triumphant adjustment. SKT have played this season SKT Jin Air, which they won one and lost one, and then played King Zone and KT. So it's tough last two matches. This was supposed to be the solace. Their fifth game in, let's show a power play. They could still win this series. Goes without being said. But just the manner of this first 30 minutes is something no one could have expected. Certainly not. Map control is nothing. Control wards only now being put down. Two in the base, but can't really put down any aggressive ones. They know they will be cleared. Does the Wombo combo work if Siva doesn't have Infinity Edge? My first thought is no. But buying enough time for Bang to pick up the 2250 gold on top of the BF sword is proving hard. Yep, yeah. and now here we go. Turn under Siege. Get the proc there off the rune into the damage from all these dry forces, and this thing is I just... I mean, Ezri on Corky up to hits from dead. poke machines. Yep, yeah. effort chunked down. Below half HP, that's going to be an inhibitor taken here in the wave. Getting ready to be prepped up top. Bot has already moved up. You can see Bang and Tal both pushing forward, trying to clear the wave out so MVP can't capitalize on this position. But now Tal cut out. He takes a ton of damage just from the one barrel alone. Back away, the Nasus pick, the split push. Never happened this game. The teleports letting him down the most. Here's the attempt of the engage. Line they want to turn in, it here. The pop up hero's entrance coming through. They get the let's bounce. They capture Max, and it seems like they will be able to burn down the Tom Kench, but they need so much more than that. Baker in the back gets a punch up. In onto ADD, a double kill coming through for Tall as they get rid of Ian now. Looking for Maha as he tries to kite back. Triple kill over to the Nasus. They get the pop on the GA. Maha completely stranded. He'll get taken down as Bang finds the kill, and just like that, SKT turn it around. They're still in the hole. They still have so much ground that needs to be gained, but this could be the start of it all. Not a moment too soon. Around 15,000 gold behind. They still do win a fight. MVP are the team that is most likely to make mistakes, to give you a chance back into the game. It wasn't a 50-50 smite this time. It was an overextension for a turret after they already had an inhibitor. Greedy stuff from the side of MVP. SKT will get the gold, but they will also be able to set up for Baron. People walking up here for MVP. Blank was not envisioned. Really nice engage from effort. Yeah. The wombo combo happens. MVP runs in different directions. And crucially, Max is at the front of all of this isn't able to use the Devourer to disengage. We've seen too many supports greed for Demolish procs. He'd already used Demolish. I don't know why he was so far up 
but specifically Max going down allows SKT to just run the knife through MVP, pick up so many kills, three onto the Nasus, one onto Sivir, definitely brings life back into the game, and it stops MVP from having a free Infernal and a free Baron buff, because previously SKT hadn't been in position to even put vision around those objectives. They're still down by about 10,500 gold, though, so it's a start, but it's a long way to the top if you want to rock and roll. So SKT still have a ton of work to be done, Baron just now spawned, Infernal Drake on the way in 40 seconds, and Tal, well, he's getting jumped on, and he is getting melted, Devour comes through, and that's just gonna get hit, be him getting picked off. Yeah, just straight up dead. I see Ian recall from this, doesn't have Unsealed Spellbook, so it won't be there, it's just a pick. Doesn't get them the Nexus turret, or sorry, the Inhibitor turret that they were working over earlier. They continue to back away, does get them inside track onto Baron. I guess the health was just to he regained for Ian so they could start up the Baron. 30 seconds on Tal. Two Infernals, very high Baron damage comp, but SKT do have a lot of CC to interrupt a quick take from the side of MVP. Blank, gonna have to maybe go for go the in early. steal here. Baker coming around the back. Cancels the W. And does not have that taunt anymore. Still 10 seconds on the Nasus. The 20 ultimate has also been using is the MVP. They don't want to go for the 50-50. They will just peel back. They know that the TP would be available. They do not want to fight SKT in a 5v5. Right. SKT have inside track on the Inferno. And there's yeah, no I'm setup from either team around there. So we could just see it. SKT pick that one up for free. Very hard to get a free Drake when you're against super minions in the mid lane. An MVP, they take a long route, but they are going to be closing in. To try to pick that one up. Seems like they're just going to get this, and SKT just kind of have to maybe watch it go. They are converging on the spot as... Blank goes in, tries to get it, he takes it away! So one Infernal over to SK Telecom, but is that going to be enough for them to close this out? Max. Red bounce there by Blank to get himself out of the pit. He'll get frozen, now Max getting caught, looking for the Devourer. Cannot find it, he'll get taken out as Hell finds another kill. Now trying to cut off ADD here, who's poking in on the backside. Blank goes forward, but a bit off more than he can chew. Everybody on SKT going he dangerously carry low, as effort has gone down. Baker flashing over the wall beyond an Ian, chasing in, looking for those final kills, but it seems like they're not going to be able to get it, but they can converge down here onto Tal and finish off the Nasus. Tal's going to try and buy time. They continue to chase. Tal has his teleport up, but knows he's not going to be able to get away with just a teleport. Here's Ezreal to clean it up. It's two kills. Should have been more for MVP. They haven't been able to fight front to back. Max getting caught first time is a really big dampener on MVP's comp because it doesn't allow one of the threats to reset aggro. They don't have the Devourer to turn that around. Still is a slight lead to MVP. They're going to try once again to turn into a Baron, this time 40 seconds on the Nasus. They're waiting, trying to bait this one out. Have an idea that Blank is over the wall, sitting in that brush. Will get spotted. Missile Voyage coming through, trying to cut him off, Max. Running back in the fight, ADD wrapping around the back, and Sichuani gets the stun into the smite. The Baron goes over to MVP. Yet again, Devour in onto Blank. He's gonna get knocked up, he's gonna get popped, the passive comes through, and Baker just Deleted. gets destroyed! The damage from Ian absolutely decimates him, and a double kill goes over to Ian. MVP now with Baron in hand, yet again, are gonna be looking to smash the inhibitors, if not the Nexus. Must, might be the best Baron take by MVP ever. Remember, this is the team that goes 50-50 every time they lost to KSV. So clean. By allowing them to come in. Max alone won them that Baron, went into the back line, had the Devour, they interrupted it super Super well held on to the Glacial Prison. We're gonna see a replay. Max starts and it's like, okay, I imagine Zach's there. Let's confirm it. Gets the ward down. Sejuani also gets the interrupt. Very well played. And then Faker, who has gone an AP heavy build, is turned on Boop. and dies so damn fast to focus fire from the members of MVP. They do recall from this. They don't push on with it, but it's actually still eight seconds on Faker. They only take the inhibitor. They need with this Baron to take down multiple inhibitors. So they're gonna return to the bot side. It will be five members of SKT. The Wombo combo, and if they're caught under the turret again, could still answer. I mean, even just to expose the inhibitors would yeah. be great for MVP if they can't take them right away. Uh, just to have that threat of, hey, SKT, do you want to push out of your base and contest us at Baron? Then we can have somebody backdoor your inhib. No problem. Get the elastic slingshot there from Blank. He's going to jump forward. Just finds Max to grab. And that means E is down. That means Zach is in vision. They can walk up for this oh, one. Oh, massive barrel into the back line. Bang. Goes low. Let's bounce and take Blank out to safety. 
And even then, they're still all under fire. Faker going low, gets the shield, has to go golden yet again, but does not have the flash. He tries to justice punch his way out, but he's gonna get taken down by Maha. Tal running away is just a lamb to the slaughter. Everybody on SKT. Low has to retreat back to the fountain, just bang and blank left alive, and MVP, I can't believe they've done it in 35 minutes. They are going to take down SKT for their first game win of the 2018 season. The ace is completed, the Nexus crumbles, and my god, they have done it. They haven't done everything, but they have stopped the game a lost streak. They will not go 0-11. and 11. They have now won one game, but what it means for the other side is also so significant. We showed previous to start of this that in the history of MVP in LCK, they were 0 and 12 in game score against SK Telecom T1. But history is looking more and more a thing for the record books and not a thing to be discussed in 2018. He may look dapper, but once again, his charges were not able to have any real impact on the game. Huge mistakes from Tal and the rest of the members from SKT. No one is blameless here. You sniggered, Achilles. You sniggered because this was supposed to be SKT's time to show that they were still here to play. That was probably the worst performance we've seen from SKT this season. No one is on the same page. The coach, any two of the players, they are not playing as a team. And even MVP, the cellar dwellers, the team that previously had no chances to make anything happen, are able to profit from it. I mean, you say he looks dapper, but I think Koma looks more like a psychiatrist, and he's going to have to play the role of one here to fix the mental of SK Telecom but after losing the MVP for the first time. You know what the scary thing is, though? You fix the mental. How good a team is SKT after that? Do they have the playing staff with the right mental? to make it work. We don't know the answer. We keep thinking it's going to smack us over the head and say, no, SKT, they're the ones. They always win. But uh, the World Championship final is looking like a long time ago, Achilles, with performances like this. It certainly is. MVP picking up the game one win. Going to be looking for the 2-0 in the craziest upset we would ever see. We'll see if SKT can even the score, take us to game three, or if they will fall from glory and from grace with a 2-0 MVP win. Don't go anywhere, guys, because you don't want to miss the conclusion of this one. It could be absolutely earth-shattering for SK Telecom. Let's see if they can bounce back when we come back in just a few minutes. Yeah. 